Hi everyone, this is Chetan Nayak. So this video is going to be a quick demonstration of various memory based detection and evasion techniques. So whenever you build a command and control center or let's say you don't build a command and control center or let's say you if you are a threat hunter, there would be scenarios when you might need to analyze the memory artifacts of a specific system, something that is really useful during your live forensics or when you're going to perform uh, an incident response on a host by segregating that host from the network. Now in such scenarios, you would obviously require to identify the payload that is currently running in memory. Now we will be taking a look at some of the examples how that can be done and how that can be bypassed as well. A lot of times uh, during your engagement, you might execute a payload either related to brute retail, cobalt strike or any other open source C2s that are currently there. Now in such scenarios, there would be, uh, uh, let's say, uh, specific scenarios where you might want to uh, execute a command on the endpoint which gathers a lot of strings and sends that to your command and control. Now these strings can be username, host name, a ton of other information, maybe some information related to your command and control itself. And these information might also be encrypted during transit. But the time when it sleeps on the endpoint, whenever you are performing sleep and jitter onto the endpoint and it's still sleeping, this has to be stored in an encrypted way. Now in this current scenario, these this specific memory can be either stored into let's say a heap or on stack. Now, when if you're talking about heap, we don't really usually have to worry about it because you can eventually walk a heap, extract information and uh, encrypt them when you are sleeping. You can do the same for every other heap that you allocate by crafting your own custom heap and encrypting them uh, when you are sleeping. However, things change a bit when we talk about stack. I have a quick example here. So uh, let's say I created, I create this specific variable and I copy this string that I have to this variable, which is of four bytes. Now, if I take a look at the stack, this, there should be a pointer for this string on stack and I should be able to identify and locate them. Let's take a look at this example here that I have. Sorry, not this one, my bad. Uh, stack, okay. So you can see that I have quickly identified the top of the stack. This is nothing but your RSP or your top of the stack pointer. You have the stack base, that is where your stack actually starts from. And after subtracting this value from the top from your stack base and subtracting an eight byte offset, you will usually get the stack size that you currently have. That is basically what the current top of the stack is. What I have done is that I have taken an example like this and I have uh, copied badger doesn't care string onto that specific value. Let's go to this variable, sorry, not variable. Let's go to this process and see how it looks like in memory. I'll click on strings, 10, I'll click on filter. I'll search for, let's say, badger. And you can see that this uh, value resides at 64FC90. If we perform a quick refresh, you should be able to see some stack threads here. We can see we have a stack thread at 64A000, 64D000, and a few more. The one that we're interested in right now is 64D because this value resides between 64D and this value that we have. So I'll open this. If you subtract 64D000 from 64FC90, you should get um, 2C90. I think, let's see, uh, I might be wrong. Yeah, you can see we have 2C90 over here and you can see the data that is currently there on stack. This is not on heap, it is on stack. You can validate that by taking a look at this stack thread. And you can also see that our top of the stack was 64FC50, which should be this specific location. And it should go down to the very bottom till it reaches 65,000. Now, if I go back and I hit enter, it encrypts the stack that you have. So if I click on reread, you can see the whole data that we have over here. It has currently changed and the whole value is basically containing 9a and sometimes at other places a different set of value. Now what has happened here is that I have extracted the top of the stack. I encrypted these values with a simple ZOR uh, algorithm that is there and I ZOR'd it with the key 0x9a. So when you ZOR a specific null byte or with a zero value with the key, you get the exact same key in return and that's why you're seeing these values. However, you can see our data that was over here, it is now gone and it is encrypted. So when you're going to sleep, 
you should perform something like this or else uh, researchers can perform uh, let's say string comparison but that will only be doing a live analysis and at not at other scenarios so if i go back and if i hit enter my original stack should be restored and you can see that it's now unzored and there are no such strings currently so sorry the strings are currently restored back again and if i hit enter it should successfully exit without leading to a crash one thing to remember is that if you try to access any value that is stored on stack while it is encrypted you will end up getting a wrong value and you might end up crashing in the scenario if, it, if that location is going to be a pointer to some other region so let's see how this can be done in a real life scenario as well now similar to stack you also have heap encrypt we can use various heap allocation apis provided by microsoft such as heapwalk or heap create to actually create your own custom crafted heap as i have done over here allocate some memory into that region encrypt that specific location over here i printed the encrypted data in this scenario i unallocated it i again uh, sorry not i did not unallocate it my bad i decrypted the region over here and i printed that back again so in such scenario you can actually enumerate all the heap uh, allocated within your specific heap handle and you should be able to enumerate it I decided to apply this for brute total because for obvious reasons I wanted to hide the stack as well as heap in memory so apart from the p which is already being encrypted in full so let's see how this would look like over here so this is something similar to the uh, upcoming release that I have for brute total for v1.2 I'll create a red based payload which I will save here and I will convert this bin file using a quick loader that I have over here to a uh, executable we should have something called as uh, bin to inject.exe so let's go back and see cls bin to inject.exe let's search for our values that we have now usually I use a JSON string uh, to extract the information that I require and send it back over the network to my command and control. This string is encrypted. However, uh, when the string gets created, it will by default be created on heap itself. And there are a few other values like the token that I use to communicate or authenticate with my command and control that gets stored on stack. So what I decided to do was uh, uh, using the similar technique that I showed earlier, I decided to encrypt them. So let's see if I can find those strings here right now. Let me refresh it. Let's see if I can filter these out and find some strings like for example b hyphen the name of my payload. You can see that it exists over here in this current scenario. If I also go and search for let's say chkin, you can see we have these values over here because currently it's not sleeping for a large scale. Which means that these are check-in values and other uh, data that gets encrypted and added and it gets encrypted when it is, it is sorry. It actually gets uh, sent out in an encrypted context. So uh, in the transit, it is still encrypted inside your malleable profile. However, this should not be shown over here. And currently, you can only see it because it is in the sleep zero, sleep one mode, which is a very small uh, set of seconds to continuously encrypt and decrypt your heap as well as stack. Another thing that you can actually verify here was if I search for let's say b hyphen zero, this value, as you can see, it resides at 107EFA9. So if you scroll down and if you take a look at let's say uh, 107 right let's see we, where we can find this value it should be over here 107 um, let's see 107 e and I believe this should be our location in this scenario which should be our RW region if you scroll it down you should be able to find you can see that there are some several strings at various other locations you can see the username over here sorry the directory over here and a few other strings in this scenario the username back again let me verify it is 107 107 efa9 yeah sorry it won't be in this region yeah it should be within this specific region itself 1047 and within this region so it's a 36 kilobyte uh, value that you have which is currently stored, stored into a read write region the other value that we had was chkin which was a json value uh, over here let me filter it out over here and you can see that this belonged to a 962 region which in our case should be uh, 962 should be at this between these two values over here that you have so not this value 962 e5c 962 it should be somewhere over here in this specific area over here now what we're trying to look at is let's see how what happens when we 
put a long sleep time here. If I put a long sleep time, both my stack and heap should be encrypted. Now let me go back and perform a quick refresh here. You can see that several values changed. I'll perform a quick search over here for let's say chkin and you can see that there is no specific string anymore because both my stack, my heap was encrypted. Let's see if I have any b-0 here. You can see no b-0. zeros. If I search for just b- hyphen, which was basically my token to authenticate with the network, you can see that there is no such token anymore. These are the usual values from, for, from Microsoft's own DLL itself. So nothing to worry about over here. So in short, my point over here is that if you're able to encrypt your sleep, uh, your stack as well as your, uh, let's say, uh, heap value, you won't have to worry about most of that thing. You can see we have these stack values over here. I'm not sure which thread it is currently. You can see it's 9896. Let me see, my thread is 9200, sorry, 8404. Let's search for the 8404 thread that we have. You can see we have the 8404. This is another thread, I'm oh, sorry, that is uh, page guarded. This is not page guarded, but I believe that was uh, modified. And you can see that you can only see garbage over here and nothing apart from that. Sorry, the stack, actually the thread ID changed. Let me refresh and search for my data over here. You can see that these values are totally empty and it doesn't contain anything. Let's see, this is a reserved one. This is page guarded. Let's see if there are any other stack for our current thread in this scenario. We have one, two, three uh, stack value. You cannot use this up. This is guarded by default by the system itself. And this one does not contain anything. Let's see what it looks like when we go back to sleep zero again. Yeah, it will take its own sweet time to come back. Let me just type sleep one in this scenario. We kept a sleep value, which did not add a jitter. So yeah, it should connect back. Let's do a refresh and let's search. Sorry, not over here, my bad. Our stack data, it's still garbage because let, let me add a sleep zero and see if I can extract these values. With sleep zero, you should be able to see most of the uh, data over here. You can see a continuous set of new heap allocations. If I quickly perform a search, if I search for B hyphen over here, we can see several uh, allocations which were performed by the, uh, some of them were performed by me, some of them were performed by the win.dll and so on. However, the moment I go back to sleep 60 again, all of these values will be encrypted because both stack as well as heap in this scenario gets encrypted. So this is a quick example as to how you might want to secure your payload into memory once you execute it. It's a pretty good idea and um, it's not something that is totally required required I would say because uh, probably at this point of time it's only CrowdStrike which is uh, known to use the Intel's uh, TDT to actually scan. That's its uh, threat detection model uh, which uses a lot of ML algorithm as well as your uh, Intel's vPro platform to search uh, the uh, memory in a pretty quick manner. However, I haven't seen any other EDRs implementing that. They might implement it, but again, there's still a requirement that the system should be vPro in order for it to perform quick memory scans. Apart from that, in order to identify these values, the user would specifically have to know in which system it, uh, your payload is, and they would also have to actually go over there, run some tasks, and they would have to identify the process first to actually extract these values, which can again be itself in a, I would say, a time-consuming manner. and if a user has already access to your system, then it's a high chance that uh, uh, that the threat hunter might already know what you are actually doing. But see, it's still a good idea to hide some sensitive information about your payload into memory. So uh, yes, that would be all for this specific video. I have a few more videos lined up on um, evasion as well as detections, both from uh, the threat hunting as well as for the red teamers point of view. So I'll release them later on next week. And that would be all for this specific video then.